First thing you need to know, this is not a paid endorsement for any of the products I'm going to show. This is just to help you in light of this storm that's coming up. I'm not taking the storm lightly. You shouldn't either. It's just a prep, you know, kind of show you what you need. So here are the basic things that everybody at the store yesterday was buying. You got eggs, bread, bacon, milk, and water. Thumbs up. Now those were the things everybody seemed to be buying yesterday. It was kind of interesting that they were buying stuff like bacon and milk because if we happen to lose power, unless you got a grill and a really good cooler, those two things aren't going to do much good. But the big thing everybody was buying was water. Water went off the shelves like crazy yesterday. You know, I understand you need water, but eight or nine cases for something that may last a week with if you have power outages. Hmm. A little strange. Okay, so really and truly, this is what most people were buying. Along with the eggs and the bread and the milk and bacon and water, they were getting sweets, they were getting candy, chips, beer, and Oreos. By the way, I didn't buy that beer yesterday. I've had it a while. You can see that it's open. I think I drank one or two out of it. But this is what people were buying for the most part. Here's a few more things you, you'll definitely need for this storm. If we get it and we lose power, you need a flashlight. Hang on. Whew. It's pretty bright. Look at that. Pretty bright. So it's like shines on the side and you can like clip it on your shirt. And if you get bored and you got animals, it's got a laser pointer too. So you can aggravate the animals. Candles. Definitely a must with a lighter. We're not going to light that candle. And of course, batteries. Because everything we own today takes batteries, right? Well, not really, but it'd be a good idea to have a radio. You know, I'm sorry about that shaky camera. So, just a few things you might need. Now, you asked me, why are you showing all this? We know what we need. The news has told us for a week that what we need are these basic essentials. And I agree. You do need to have a... A plan together you need to be thinking about it what you need and of course the most important thing everybody's getting is bottled water here's something you may not know now if you have well water it's a very good possibility you need this bottled water if your power goes out you can't draw well water from the well if you have city water it's a 95 percent chance that your local municipality that sells you water has backup generators at where they suck the water from, like out of a lake or something, because they don't want to lose water pressure either. It's really hard if they absolutely lose all their power and their water down there. It's kind of hard to get it primed up. It's like you know sucking water through a garden hose or you know like stealing gas out of a car. You know how you got to suck through the hose. anyway. So most likely you're gonna still have water. And yeah, you may have to drink it out of the tap. It's not gonna hurt you. Now, why are people around right here kind of going crazy with this? Well, first and foremost, this is a very powerful storm. Uh, and it's huge. I mean, it's only going back down to a Category 4 as of this morning. The track has shifted a little bit more towards the west. So, western North Carolina, where I'm at, may not get a real big impact. But of course, that could change tomorrow. Well, let me rephrase that. It's a Cat 4. The news doesn't like to say Category 4 or Category 5. I guess it sounds cooler to say Cat 4 or Cat 5. I don't know. I'm not a professional weatherman. I'm, I'm definitely not an anchor man. But anyhow, that's what they like to say. And I'm going to tell you why I think a lot of people, especially here in Western North Carolina, are taking this storm very seriously. Way back about 28 years ago, on the morning of September the 21st, 1989, a Cat 4 storm named Hugo made landfall just north of Charleston on Sullivan's Island. Now, this storm sort of took the same track as Irma's taking. It came through the bottom part of the Atlantic, around the, the islands, the Caribbean islands and stuff, and it actually weakened all the way back down to a Cat 2. 
And then when it got back out into open waters before making landfall in South Carolina, it got back to a Cat 4. So it was pretty powerful when it made impact there close to Charleston. But what it did was when it made impact, it just kept going inland. It didn't bounce off and go back out in the ocean. This thing came inland, and it wound up coming right over western North Carolina where I lived at the time in Hickory. The eye did, actually. Um, my sister and her family lives in Charleston, South Carolina, and we went and got them and brought them back to Hickory so they would be out of the you know, path of this powerful storm. Well, it just followed them all the way up here. So I remember that morning. I mean, it hit there very early in the morning in, in Sullivan's Island. By the time it got to us, it was around 7.30, 8 o'clock that morning, that Friday morning. Well, nobody will ever forget it. If you were here and you were alive, and you, 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 know, you remember that storm. I mean, Hickory was devastated. There was trees down everywhere. There was homes tore up. There was no power. I mean, it was crazy. Nobody expected this storm to do what it did. And, you know, were we prepared? Probably not as good as we should have been. So anytime there's a storm coming like that, like a hurricane, people here get prepared. They get prepared everywhere. I mean, everybody right now is prepared from southern Florida all the way up to, you know, to Virginia and past. Because this is a big storm. This is a Cat 4. It has been a Cat 5 for a while. So we're not taking the storm lightly. Nobody is. So, we, you know, people are preparing. And you should prepare. You should be ready. Um, but when Hugo hit, I mean, it was it was big, you know. I remember I was living with my dad. We were out of power for seven days. Seven days out of power. We, we didn't live out in rural areas. We lived inside the city limit. But we were out of power for seven days because of one transformer right above our house. A tree limb knocked it out, and it was just kind of low priority. You know, we were on a dead end. But I'll never forget coming home that night as I crested the hill and started down the hill towards where we lived. There was these three big, huge power trucks, and their booms were all in the air, and they had spotlights shining up on this pole, and their yellow lights were flashing. And I was just like, these guys are my hero. And I went past them a little bit, and I pulled in where I lived, and I walked back up there. And these guys on the side of their truck said GP&L, Georgia Power and Light. These guys were from Georgia, had come up here to help, and they were my heroes. And the power came back on shortly after that. I, I just, you know, you take stuff for granted, you know. I don't know how many times I walked through the house when the power was out to hit a light switch for it to come on. There was no power. So we remember Hugo. So we remember what to do. And, um, you know, I, I'm having problems with my storage on my phone. If, if I did something there, kind of freaky, I had to push a button. But anyway, don't take the storm lightly. You know, definitely, definitely, definitely. Those, those The folks in Florida who are going to really get the brunt of the storm and the folks who have already took the brunt of the storm in the Caribbean, pray for those people. I mean, it was devastating. Some of those islands were devastated by this this really big storm. So, you know, pray for them, pray for the people of Florida, pray for everybody who's in the path of this storm. Like I said, as of this morning, the storm had shifted a little bit to the west. Now they're saying, you know, it's going to go through Georgia and into Tennessee. West North Carolina may only get some rain and some wind, but not the brunt of it. But that could change by this afternoon. It could change tomorrow. Who knows? It's just the way it is. So, you know, be storm ready, as the news says. Be storm ready. Be aware. And you know what? If 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 your power goes out and you got whoops, you got candles, you got flashlights, and God knows you got plenty of water, you know, sit around the table, you know, light some candles, play a board game. Play a board game with your family. Or you know, if you're with somebody that you really like, you can light some candles. You know. A little boom chicka wow. 